This is Judy Capshaw, Senior Pastor of Preach Unto Them Jesus in Oklahoma City. Our broadcast is Because He Is, and we're glad you've joined us today. We've been talking about health and healing, the kingdom of God, what God is designed for His people, how He wants us to live this life in this earth, filled, hallelujah, with the anointing and the power and the glory of God, being examples of all that Jesus is. But we can't do that unless we know Him, unless we understand Him. And this Word of God is given to us that we might know and free freely, freely receive everything that he's blessed us with. He's given us life and blessing and health and healing and it's ours. Our job is to believe that and receive it. So we've been talking about the kingdom of God, kingdom life and kingdom living. We've been on this series now for quite a while and I want to encourage you today. We left off on the last broadcast talking about health and talking about healing. I want you, if you will, turn with me in Proverbs, and we're going to take some scriptures there in the book of Proverbs because it's so um, apropos to health and healing. But remember, here again, I'm going to give you this definition. I've been on this, I, I don't know, four or five times, six times, a false reality because you've got to understand that, that what you're feeling in your sense realm is not real, okay? It is not real. It's rooted in the enemy's uh, arsenal of deception, but it is not real. So a false reality is any situation, any sickness, any disease, any habit, any sin that opposes or is in opposition to the word of God is a false reality. If, let me ask you this, if this is true, if this word, God gave us this word, if this is true and he says that we are blessed and he says that we uh, have healed all that he has healed all of our diseases if he says that he freely gives us all things if he says that and then anything in our life re reflects contrary to that what are you going to believe are you going to believe your circumstance you're going to believe your situation you're going to believe your your body that lies to you are you going to believe uh, your bank account that lies to you what are you going to believe if you believe this word and you know this word this is the key. Most people don't have an understanding, so they're, they're victims. They fall victim to every attack of the enemy because they don't know what God's provided for them. But if you believe this word, this word is truth. Then anything else that is contrary to this, anything that reflects differently than this word of God is not true. It's a false reality. And you've got to have that so ingrained in your heart and your spirit that immediately you can recognize that for what it is and not give into it, not get prey to it. You know, they, they said years ago that bankers, uh, whenever they wanted to, to discover counterfeit money, they didn't rub the counterfeit money to it. They took the real money and rubbed the real money and handled the real money and got the feel of the real money so that when anything false came into their, their hands, they would be able to spot it immediately. Well, that's kind of the way this walk is with God. If we want to know the false, we don't study the false, we study the truth. We study everything that God says, everything that God wants us to be, everything that God's given to us uh, by the blood of Jesus, every blessing, every uh, part of life that He wants to encourage us with, everything that is true and honest and just and lovely and pure and of a good report. We study that. And when we begin to study that and we begin to understand that this is the way it is, and anything contrary to that that comes up that we recognize as false, we don't give into it. We put a wall up against it. What is that wall? It's the blood of Jesus. It's the Word of God. It's the power of the Holy Ghost that lives in us that quickens our mortal body. Hallelujah. We're talking about that. You've got to have a healthy house in order to produce the work and the fruit that God wants you to live in. If you're sick all the time, or you're diseased, or you're out of sorts, or you're discomforted, or whatever... You know, if that, now we're all going to have days. I understand that. There's going to be days the battle's a little stronger than others. But I'm just saying, if that's your lifestyle, then there's something wrong. If that's your lifestyle, then this has not become real to you. And this is not just a, a good book. This isn't just something that we read when we want to and put it away. This is a way of embracing the Word of God and bringing the Word into our lives to where our spirit man are changed by the Word of God. It says we are born again of the incorruptible seed of the Word of God. That incorruptible seed cannot be corrupted, can't be changed, cannot be tainted, cannot, cannot not produce what God says it is. And the incorruptible seed of the Word of God has all of the DNA of God that is in there. This Bible is all tells us who God is. 
all of his heart, his will, his, his ways, his desires. Well, that seed that comes within our heart and in our life, that seed has his DNA and it fills our life and it changes us. And we, we begin to have a transformation because we're changed from what? From glory to glory by the Spirit of God. So powerful, saints. And I want to, you know, if you can just grab hold of this. This is not just a religion. It's not something you're going to pick up, put on on Sunday, and go home and take it off again, and then just live. This is a relationship, and it's a way of life. And if you want victory, if you want to walk like the Father wants you to walk, then you're going to be a disciple, and you're going to take this word. You're going to embrace it. You're going to eat it. You're going to love it. You're going to live it. And you're going to let the Holy Spirit of God teach you and train you and begin to bring revelation and truth into your heart and into your life. So we're talking about health and healing. And we've studied some scriptures on the last one of, of Psalm 103. You know, he heals all of our diseases. He takes all of our sins. He gives us all of his benefits. And, and God wants us to embrace that. But we'll take a few more scriptures here. And I want you, if you will, turn with me to Proverbs 16:24. And we're going to study this out a little bit because a lot of sickness and a lot of disease going on in the earth today. People are really battling. And, you know, many people today, they're fearful because they don't have insurance that can cover their sickness and disease. So not only are they sick and trying to get well and trying to get cured, trying to get healed, but then they have the financial responsibility too. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. The sickness and disease, if you can't, you know, if you can't battle it in the natural with the doctors and the hospitals, and you don't have the insurance to do it, then it causes poverty and lack of funds and everything else to come to, into your life. And so we see that how the enemy just works in this kind of thing and just causes it to uh, snowball on us. And God does not want that. I mean, his heart... His heart is for you to enjoy life. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it abundantly. Well, abundant life is not being poor and broken sick. That's not abundant life. But it's up to us. And you know, if you don't get anything else out of this, I want you to understand it's not God's fault. If you are not walking in the blessings of God and the things that God's provided for you, understand this, that is not God's fault. God has done all he can do. He has said all he can say. And it's your responsibility and my responsibility to believe it. You know, we said that in Deuteronomy. He says, you get to choose. You get to choose. A lot of people like to blame everything on God. You know, I didn't get healed because it wasn't the will of God. Well, if you believe this word of God, this is God's will. And his will for you is to be all that he wants you to be in this earth, in this day, and in this time that we're living. In Proverbs 16, and let's look, I was going to uh, start with verse 24, but let's go up here a little bit. Uh, let's go up to verse 22. Understanding is a wellspring of life unto him that hath it, but the instructions of fools is folly. If you don't understand the heart of the Father, you don't understand the will of God. You know, that was one thing that I, I guess probably I struggled with in my Christian walk over and over again. When I was a young girl, little, little girl, well, I'm talking maybe six, seven years old, I can remember my mom sitting around uh, the table, kitchen table. Back in those days, they neighbors would sit around the kitchen table, drink coffee and visit and, and have their, their neighborhood time together. But some of these gals were sitting around talking. They were talking about the end days. And they were talking about uh, God destroying everything with fire and that God was angry and that the world was going to end by fire. And, you know, I was just like six years old and I was so impressionable. And that, I tell you, I heard that and I thought, and it really scared me. It really scared me. And from that point, I think there was a seed of distrust sown in my heart about the, the intent of God, the heart of the Father, His purpose. And I grew up with that, that type of a fear of thinking, boy, if I step out of line, God's going to deal hard and heavy with me. And I didn't have any understanding of the heart of the Father until later on in life, thank God, I got born again and filled with the Holy Spirit and begin to study the Word of God and begin to understand that God's purpose for us is life. His purpose for us is not judgment, it's to show the world the heart of the Father by the way we live, the way we conduct our life, the way we think, how we can love people. 
how we can have compassion and how we can have mercy and the, the principles of God. So it took a while for me to come to that place because I had that seed of distrust uh, sown in me as a little girl. And over the years, I've had to learn and realize that the father, to quit uh, questioning and, and um, accusing God of being unfaithful to what he says and to what his word says. But it says with understanding. So I'm praying today you get understanding of the word of God and that you begin to understand what God is saying to you. It says the heart of the wise teaches his mouth and adds learning to his lips. You got to, I'm telling you saints, you've got to lasso those lips. If you don't do anything else in this life, lasso those lips. Quit talking trash. Quit speaking all of the doubt, the bad, the negative, the doom, the gloom, the stuff. You're your own worst enemy. You're the one that's causing most of your problems. Because you keep repeating and rehearsing and speaking all of this stuff that is absolutely, it's destroying you. Destroying your peace of mind. It destroys your, your heart, your, your soul. Stop it. Stop it. You have to add learning to your lips. Speak the word of God. Declare the word of God. Decree the word of God. And what God says is truth, praise God. So start speaking that out instead of the stuff you're speaking in your, in your mouth and in your life. All right, it says, Pleasant words are as honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. Sweet words are health to the bones. Have you ever noticed people that uh, there are some people that are just so filled with the love and the anointing and the glory of God and you love to be around those kind of people. You love just cozying up to them because everything they say is, is, is blessing. It's glory. It's kindness. It's um, an ability. It's like honey that's being poured and it just runs down. It just such, brings such a soothing place in your heart and your life. You love to be around those people because that's what the Word of God does. It brings health. It brings healing. A good word brings hope. A good word brings encouragement. Speak to yourself those good words. You know, you can, you can control the way your body is going and the way you're doing. The Lord spoke to me oh, a couple of three or four weeks ago. He said, when you get up out of that bed before your feet hit that floor, he said, the thing I want you to say is this is the day the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. And you know, when I am obedient to do that, it sets the tone for my whole day. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This gift day is a gift from God and he wants me to rejoice in it and be happy and be glad. And it just kind of sets the tone for my whole day. Even if things, you know, are a little rocky in some areas, it just lets you go through life. It lets you go through these situations and trials and circumstances with a lot better attitude. And they don't come and pile on you like they do when you're grumpy and mad and upset and speaking doom and gloom and sickness and disease and anger and unforgiveness, bitterness and all that. Whole different ballgame. The life choice is yours and you get to choose it. All right? Uh, verse 24, we read that. Okay, pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to all the bones. So I want to encourage you, watch your words. We're talking about health and healing in the kingdom of God. A lot of it is up to us and what we say and what we do. Let's take another scripture now. Let's go to um, Matthew 4.23. Matthew 4.23. Get this scripture, it's a good one. Of course, all the word is good, but this is good. It says, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Now think about that. The gospel message of the kingdom, that's why we're emphasizing this message of kingdom life and kingdom living. Because in that gospel, in that power, there is healing for all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Jesus Christ was our example. He said the works that he did shall we do in the greater works. We've got to understand that the kingdom message incorporates healing. It incorporates deliverance. It incorporates raising from the dead. It incorporates everything that Jesus did is in this kingdom. And we have the privilege and the power to uh, embrace it and to begin to live it and expect it to be so. Praise God. Expect it. You know, so many people walk in such doubt and fear and unbelief and they say the things, but their heart's not in it. 
They don't really expect it to happen and they get shocked if it does. We should be a people that live the supernatural lifestyle as though it is our natural way of life. And in God, that's the way it is. The supernatural is our natural. We should be expecting to see the dead raised and the sick healed and all the things that Jesus did and the greater things. Go with me to Matthew 9.35. Let's skip over there real quick. Matthew 9.35. And it says, And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, I'm telling you, Jesus only ministered the kingdom of God message. Study it out. I encourage you. In fact, I, I pray that you will. I pray you'll study the Gospels and realize this is the message that Jesus preached, the kingdom of God message. That's why the religion hate, hated him and killed him because it came against every one of their doctrines. Every one of their, their outward shows of religiosity and piety and all of that kind of thing. God is looking for the inward change, the power that comes from within, that it comes from within and comes out so that we understand and we believe that we have the authority and the power to do all things that Jesus Christ did. Healing is part of the package. And in these scriptures, you can understand and see everywhere he preached the kingdom of God, he healed. Not one or two diseases, it says all. All manner of disease, all manner, everything that happened and everything that they were subject to, Jesus Christ healed it. That is the kingdom of God message. That's what God wants for you. That's what he desires for you to latch on to and embrace and in, put it in your heart and just cause, cause it to become reality to yourself. Cause it to be what God wants it to be. I want to um, Matthew 8. We're going to take two more time permitting here. Matthew 8. And let's look at verse... Uh, 17 it says and this is talking about Jesus that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses Jesus not only took your sin he not only took all of your heartache your suffering he took your infirmities and he bore all of your sicknesses and we know that in Isaiah 53 it tells us that so if he took it and he bore it why are you taking it and why are you bearing it if he removed it and put it under the blood. What right does Satan have to come and attack you with sickness and disease? He does not have any right to do it. And it's time for us to get a mindset and to get an understanding that we have the right and the power and the authority to resist that thing and say, no, in the name of Jesus, that doesn't belong to me. I'm not taking that package. I'm not receiving it and I'm not going to give uh, heed to it. I have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I'm healed. I am well and I am whole. Hallelujah. God wants us to walk, praise God, in such an anointing, such a power that he's given to us. Don't let the price that Jesus paid be in vain. You know, that's the thing that stirs me on. The price the master paid so I could walk healthy? The price that he paid so that I could be free from condemnation? The price that he paid that I could be filled with the anointing of God? I don't want him to pay that price in vain. I want him to be thankful and, and, and proud. You know, if Jesus can be proud, I want him to say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. It only comes by what you believe. It only comes by embracing the truth. And we're going to close with this. We know that all of you know this, this scripture, but we'll close with it anyway. It's a good one. 2 John, 2 John 3.2 Or third John. Sorry about that. Three John, <clears throat> third John, second verse says, "Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers." You see, if you don't have understanding about the Word and what the Word declares to be true, and if this is not part of your spirit, man, so embrace, so one with this Word. It'll be hard for you to walk in this. But as your soul prospers, as your soul is illuminated, as your soul comes alive to the things of God, and as your soul is transformed by renewing daily the Word of God, then you're going to prosper and you're going to be in health, even as, as the soul prospers in, in God's Word. So I want to encourage you today. Let your confession be, I am healed, I am well, and I am whole. I think the Father God is going to raise up a mighty strong company of believers 
those that are kind of like a remnant that are daring to believe everything that God says. Won't fit in the mainstream maybe of religion, I don't know. But there's a people called out. There's a people that are going to latch on and say, you know what, my father said this, I believe it's true. And I can walk in this because he said it. And that's all the verification I need, is that Father's integrity is intact. And I am not going to um, dispute or I'm not going to malign his integrity by my unbelief. He said it, that seals it. So today, I want to pray with you again. We're going to believe that if you're facing a sickness or disease or you're battling to overcome one, that in the name of Jesus, you latch on to the truth of God's word that you are the healed of God, that God's purpose for you is to be in health and to be well and to be whole and to be a witness and a testimony for His glory and His goodness. Okay? Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you that those that are battling, Father, especially cancer, cancer and heart disease and diabetes, these, these major things the enemy is trying to put on your people. Father, that those diseases are as though they had never been. They are absolutely powerless over your people. And I thank you, Father God, even right now, that your people latch on and know that they know in their heart and in their, their mind, their spirit, that your will for them is to rise up out of that affliction. Rise up out of that deathbed. Rise up, saints of God. Shake it off in Jesus' name. Resist it. Don't give the enemy the power to come against you. It's your authority. You choose life today. You choose blessing today. And walk in that power and that anointing that God has called you to walk in. Be strong. Be strong. I encourage you. This walk is not for the weak. Be strong and give it no place. In the name of Jesus. I want you to know we love you and I'm praying for you. I pray God just get you strong and powerful and valiant in the things of God because this is your hour. This is your day. This is your day to shine and be what God's called you to be. Walk in it now, saints. Put your hand to the plow. Don't look back. Let God be glorified in your life. In the name of Jesus. Love you. You have a great day. Yes, my name is Cliff Red Elk, and I was hesitant about giving my testimony today until you mentioned 20, Jeremiah 29 11. It was actually on a TV show that I seen last night, and I took that as a sign that I needed to speak a little bit. Well, they say the Lord works in mysterious ways, and I, I find that to be true because my daughter was dedicated here, my great nephew was dedicated here about a month and a half ago, and ever since, every Saturday, my daughter. We're going to church tomorrow, Dad. We're going to church tomorrow. And I said, yes, we are. So she is pretty much, I'd say drag, but almost dragged me here, you know, and I'm glad that she did because I'm really starting to work on my, my temple, my body, because I was in the hospital, in, uh, the Indian hospital from Christmas night until January 5th with an infection. So I've been getting physically active and working on my eating, my body. Like I said, I'm getting my temple, the physical going. And now through her and Jesus working through her, it's helping me also work on my spiritual, and I'm just really enjoying it. I'm loving the people here, loving the praise and the, and the, and the worship, and just I just want to just say anybody out there, if you're hesitant about it and you feel something pulling you, somebody that you may not expect asking you whatever, just give in to it. It'll be worth it in the long run. So Richard Makalinski, what has Jesus done for you? Well, I'd like to, I'd like to share with you the uh, experience I had when I stayed at... Uh, at my brother-in-law's place when we first came back from Europe, directly about a year or so after I had gotten saved. Uh, I had gotten saved and got the baptism of the Holy Ghost, but it was sort of a mechanical experience. And uh, we stayed at that, uh, at that house and went to a, a service at a local church that was having a revival. And, and in the middle of the uh, preaching, the preacher uh, stopped and, and looked uh, around the church and he said uh, tonight some of you people are going to wake up and you're going to be speaking in tongues uh, and then he went out with his preaching so we uh, finished the service and came on home and went to bed and we were uh, sleeping and uh, as I was sleeping I saw uh, I had this uh, dream and in this dream I saw a little bitty dove and he was way off in the distance and there's a gold sky and he was all white and the dove kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and, bigger. and pretty soon it filled the whole perspective of my dream and there's nothing but dove there and I was suddenly woke up by my wife who said 
quiet, quiet. You're going to wake up everybody in the house. You're, you're shouting and speaking in tongues. And it was from that point on that my, uh, I call that my second infilling of the Holy Ghost because from that point on I had the joy of the Lord involving every time I would speak in tongues. Wow. He still works through dreams today. Amen. Amen. I've had several dreams in my past, but the, that one there was, was exciting. <laughs> hey, my name is Mickey Banks and I'd like to testify for Christ. Uh, when I was a child, I was raised in somewhat of a, a real troubled childhood uh, with a lot of drugs and alcohol and violence. And uh, when I was about 12 years old, my mom and I had kind of always clashed, and had a conflict. And she called me into a room one day and she asked me uh, if I had seen her do something which I had, but naturally I didn't cop to it. I said, no, I hadn't seen nothing. And she said, you're lying. And she looked at me and she says, I, I hate you. I've always hated you and I never will love you. And I was about 12 years old and at, at, in, at that time, something inside of me felt like it, I died. And I just got madder and madder at God and I got angry at God and I blamed him for everything in my life and uh, I would go outside and raise my fists and, and curse him when I was a teenager and then uh, uh, one day I met a girl which was my wife now we've been married 43 years and uh, and she uh, I was going over to a buddy of mine's house and I climbed over the uh, banister we was out on the balcony uh, sunning with my with our son, we was living together, we weren't married. And I was going over to a buddy of mine's house and I jumped over the banister and I almost fell. And my girlfriend at the time screamed and grabbed her mouth. And I, I remember looking at her and it stunned me because here I am about 20 years old and I never felt that feeling that I felt. And I was walking with my buddy and I says, you know, Jim, she was afraid I was going to fall, and he started laughing at me, and he goes, well, you big dummy, she loves you. And it was, I was so stunned by that statement because I thought, how could she love me? My own mother didn't love me. And as soon as I was walking, God spoke to me and said, for I love you too, for I am love. And, and I thought I was going crazy because of this voice talking to me. But later on, as I come to know, that voice was Christ. And he saved my soul and showed me what true love was. And that's why I want to testify that if you are absent love in your life, Christ is the one that is the one true love that's looking for you. Amen.